Okay, I am API brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. This week it is Bosch. I saw this on their social media and I thought this was kind of funny. Sensor tech, like a Bosch. Like a Bosch. And uh, this week, Lady Ada, what is the NPI new product introduction? Okay, well, this week was actually uh, sent in by a lovely viewer. They wanted me to highlight this. I was like, that is pretty cool. I somehow missed this new sensor from Bosch. It's the BMI 323. It is a uh, Fairly low cost. It's an affordable but high quality 6DOF, sometimes called 6DOF, uh, degree of freedom sensor. It's got accelerometer, gyroscope, temperature sensor, um, all in one little package, easy to uh, pick in place. Um, some things that I want to highlight, you know, we'll chat about uh, how to use it, but it's uh, two 16 bit. Um, digital resolution sensors. That's actually quite unusual. Usually you get only maybe 10 or 12 bit resolution. Um, 16 bits quite nice. Um, the zero offset and uh, is only for the gyro. The gyro is kind of where you want to look at the specs to make sure they're good because that's going to um, affect your uh, fusion more than the accelerometer. Accelerometers are, are, are fairly good these days. The gyro has, you know, um, plus or minus one degree of uh, sorry, plus or minus one degree uh, per second uh, drift or offset, um, which is pretty good. You know, you can get better, but you're going to have to pay a lot more. Whereas this sensor is only a couple bucks. It's very good for the price. Um, a lot of other details, uh, you know, the accelerometer is pretty standard, goes plus minus 248G, uh, 24816G, uh, and the gyroscope goes uh, plus minus 125 up to 2000 degrees per second. Um, there's also an onboard digital temperature sensor, um, which you can use as part of your like temperature compensation management. Sometimes the sensors do drift with temperature, uh, but it's also just, you know, they tossed another sensor on there. Um, you know, it's basically an all-in-one little ready-to-go uh, fusion chip. Um, more technical specs, like, a, you know, like I think we, we mentioned, uh, the gyro is pretty good, and this also has the, the noise, which is uh, seven uh microseconds per root hertz sorry can you scroll zoom you make the window bigger. bigger yeah sorry my my i can't see text the volume more. thank you it's uh yes it's seven uh millisecond per uh square root hertz um noise density for the gyro which is pretty good and uh, a nice a nice range of um bandwidths for the, the an output data rates up to six kilohertz so um good if you want to do fusion you'll want to get uh, nice quick data and there's in built-in filters that can do some basic low pass and high pass filtering if necessary um other things that i thought were really neat about this sensor it has um the standard i squared c but also spi and i3c support which we've covered on earlier um uh INPIs, we talked about uh, I3C and how it's different than I2C. Um, and I looked, the interrupts do, you can have the interrupts, there's external pin interrupts to digital IOs, or if you're using I3C, you can have it um, sense with, you know, in-band um, interrupt support. So you only need two pins uh, if you're using I3C. Um, the Bosch uh, IMUs that we really like, you know, one of our favorites is the BNO055. Uh, we've used it for so long. It's the same company, Bosch Sensor Tech, that manufactures it. Um, this is a sensor that has accelerometer, gyro, and magnetometer all together. So it's got nine degrees of freedom, but you're going to pay for it. You see, the pricing is much more expensive instead of like, you know, two bucks or so. It's, you know, seven to 15, depending on how much you're purchasing. Inside is also a SAMD21, which is pre-programmed with Fusion algorithm, and then you talk to that SAMD21. You don't program that chip, you talk to it over I2C. Um, and that's great if you want to just get started very quickly, but again, you're going to have to pay the extra price uh, for that Fusion chip. Whereas, um, you know, if you do want Fusion data, which most people do, you want to get like Euler angle, so you know in X, Y, and Z space, you know, either Euler or Quaternion, um, location and that lets you know like it's it's easier way for you to determine gestures and determine which way it's pointing um what motions are doing if you're going to feed this into ai uh uh gesture recognition systems you know you oftentimes you're going to feed it um euler angles um to do this you'll have to do your own fusion so you'll probably want to also pick up a magnetometer 
Um, I looked in the BMM 150. Look at that. For 40,000 stock. This is a beautiful thing, by the way. For years, <laughs> that was like, I knew it was so tough to cover stuff because it was in stock. Uh, but if you want a magnetometer, this is a good one. Uh, also, I squared C um, capable, low cost. You can see it's like about a dollar or so. Um, very tiny, um, and it gives you X, Y, and Z. It's pretty common that you would have one chip for accelerometer and gyro, and then another for magnetometer. One, because the magnetometer often has to be placed away from other chips. And so, you know, and, and also like the process by making magnetometers is a little bit different. So it's not too unusual for like the magnetometer to sort of sit on the corner of the PCB um, and the accelerometer and gyro to sit in the center or maybe near a weighted thing so it doesn't have as much vibration because the magnetometer doesn't, vibration doesn't affect it, but a speaker or like big chunks of metal, a lot of current flow can. So some of the things you have to think about if you're laying out a circuit board with these two chips, but combine them together and you get nine degrees of uh, freedom. And then you can run the BSX sensor fusion software that Bosch provides, which is really nice. There are some free um, libraries. You know, even Adafruit, we have uh, a couple of free examples. Uh, PJRC also published some sensor fusion software using um, free algorithms. But if you are using Bosch sensors, you might as well use their sensor fusion software because again, it's free, it's published. You will need to have nine off though um, to get uh, full orientation in 3D space. Um, you know, I downloaded it. You have to approve a license. The license basically says you can only use it with Bosch things. Um, that's very normal. Uh, and you can see the output you get is uh, either quaternion X, Y, Z, W, or um, Euler angle, angles, heading, pitch, roll, and yaw. So, you know, that's usually good for pretty much everything. Only downside is um, you're going to uh, have to make sure that your chip is one of the ones that's supported um, with the library because the library has pre-compiled binary blobs. Again, it, Bosch sort of does this in general. There's a couple companies where they'll provide a library and sort of to make sure that you really, you know, only use their stuff with their stuff. They don't um, publish the code itself. They give you a binary blob. And in this case, it's only, it seemed to be only available for the ARM Cortex chipset. So you see the M0, M0+, plus, M1, M3, M4. M4 with FPU and M7. 80-ish um, percent of people are going to be using Cortex chips. If you're using something like Tensilica, they have for other libraries, not this one, released you know Tensilica, which is ESP32 or maybe WISC5. Um, email Bosch, you know, they'll probably compile it for you and, and send it along or add it to the bundle. Um, just FYI on that though, because I don't want people to get stuck not realizing it that they do have code for the chip, but the fusion code is pre-compiled. Um, the chip itself is a, you know, QFN-ish package or whatever, DFN, whatever it's called. Um, it has a few, you know, yes, there's this fusion thing that you can do, but there's a couple filters and behavior uh, things that it can do on the inside, like it can do some detection of behaviors. Um, step detection, uh, it can do a single, double, and triple tap, not too uncommon with the accelerometer. Orientation, hysteresis for motion. Um, there's a big FIFO, which is quite nice uh, in synchron data synchronization, which means that if you do want to do um, gesture recognition or pump this into a fusion uh, system, because you can't really drop any data, you'll, you'll, you'll want to have all the data in the FIFO, and then you can read it all at once and pump it bit by bit into your fusion software you're not constantly you know you won't have to maintain the fusion software constantly you can um do it every 2k worth of, of fifo data so you know depending if you're doing um you know one kilohertz that means um only maybe half a second or a quarter second you have to read all the data and read it all at once which isn't you know too bad um but take advantage of that and then uh, there is a full data sheet with you know absolutely everything that you need to read every register set every filter However, um, if you just want to like get right in there and have this work with your microcontroller or microcomputer, there is a published C API. This doesn't have any binary blobs, so you can port it to whatever platform you like. Um, inside the examples folder is a common.c and common.h, and that's where you would put in your SPI or I squared C or I3C um, and delay. Those are kind of like the, 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 just the read, the write, and then delay functions for whatever protocol you're using. 
um, you implement that and the rest of it comes out. Um, you can then grab the accelerometer and gyroscope data, feed it into your own sensor fusion, or just use it as is if you can just use the raw data. Available on DigiKey. In stock. Available on DigiKey. So much. Available on DigiKey. 10,000 pieces. Yeah. Um, in the chat, folks are like, we need another song about the chip surplus. I know. I know. <laughs> We've got too many chips, um, but good for us because it means that uh, you can actually design stuff and yeah. know that you'll be able to get the component by the time you're ready for production. So a great, uh, you know, basic $2, $3, uh, 6 DOF IMU, very competitive with the current market. Um, good performance, good specs. I like that 16-bit and uh, good software support as well. Okay. That is this week's INFPI. Hi, on MPI.